There are some other protocols that are going to be of interest to us when we're configuring our firewalls. Among these are the Internet Protocol, the User Datagram Protocol, the Internet Control Message Protocol. Um, this was uh, part of a um, another presentation that I had, so I left in ARP uh, just for the sake of completeness. I can't think of uh, any applications off the top of my head where we'll be interested in uh, uh, the ARP protocol from a uh, from the standpoint of configuring a, a firewall, uh, but I left it in anyway. So let's talk about the user datagram protocol. This is a transport layer uh, protocol, uh, like. Um, TCP is also at the transport layer. Uh, UDP, however, is much, much simpler than TCP. UDP does not set up communication sessions. It does not guarantee delivery of the data. It does use ports uh, like TCP does. And again, there's uh, they range from 0 to 65,535. That's the largest number that can be expressed in 16 bits. UDP uh, uses primarily broadcasts. Unless you think uh, UDP is not a very important protocol, DNS mainly uses UDP packets to uh, perform its uh, name resolution functions. Uh, and that's certainly important. Here's the UDP header. Again, we're showing you four bytes wide, uh, and we stack these up. Uh, in the real world, this is a stream of ones and zeros. Um, so keep that in mind. The uh, thing we're interested in here from the standpoint of firewalls is uh, source port and destination port. Um, after uh, these two fields and the length and checksum, everything in here is data, uh, data bytes. So if you compare this to a TCP header, it is much, much more um, simple or simpler. The Internet Protocol, this is a, uh, we're going down the stack here. And if you remember the, uh, uh, previous video on uh, the layers, the layer underneath the transport layers, the network layer. Um, so the IP uh, protocol, internet protocol, is a network layer protocol. It's responsible for moving data across the network. It encapsulates higher layer protocols such as TCP, and this is a mistake. This should be UDP. I always get that wrong. UDP. Um, if you look uh, back at the video and the picture of the, uh, we have a long stream of of data up in the application layers. We move it down into the. Uh, we want to move it across the network. We move it down to the transport layer. Transport layer breaks it into segments and puts uh, typically a TCP header on each of the segments. And then it moves down, each one of these uh, um, packets moves down to the network layer. And then uh, on in front of the TCP layer, we're going to put the IP header. Um, so that's what we mean by encapsulation. IP doesn't set up sessions. It does use IP numbers. And uh, we're going to use this to filter. Uh, to create filters for our firewalls. And I'll show you this uh, a little bit later here. Uh, the current version of IP that we're using is version 4. Version 5 is experimental. 
uh, version 6 uh, is going to be the next thing we use uh, whenever we're uh, ready to convert the internet over to this. Uh, again, here's your IP header. Um, I cut this out of the RFC. Uh, if you're interested in the RFC, you can uh, basically do a search on the IP RFC, and uh, you'll uh, you'll find this. No problem. I can't remember what the number of it is. Again, uh, we're displaying this four bytes wide, and we've just stacked it up here so we can get it all on one page. Uh, in the real world, the IP header is a string of ones and zeros. So the the top line here is bits 0 through 31. Uh, this is bit 32 here, runs through 63. And this is 64 through 95, I think, uh, etc. Um, so just keep in mind that you know this is not it doesn't come across the wire like this. It's a string of ones and zeros. Um, <clears throat> there are several interesting things here uh, from a security standpoint. The big thing we're going to be interested in from uh, firewalls is source address, destination address. These are IP addresses. Um, and hopefully you've had enough uh, basic networking courses where you understand what's going on with this. Uh, other things of interest here would be the uh, the protocol. Now what this really is is the embedded protocol. This tells the receiving stack what's inside. So basically from here on down this is uh, all this is uh, um, the header of the embedded protocol protocol. Uh, usually it's going to be TCP, for example. and past that is the actual data that we wanted to transmit. So these embedded protocols, um, we have a byte here that we can ex uh, we can tell the uh, TCP IP stack on the receiving computer what to expect. If memory serves me well, if there's an O1 here, it's going to be ICUMP. Um, if it's O6, I think it's TCP, if it's a 1 1, I think it's UDP. I haven't drove my pen. I think. So, this protocol field tells the stack what to expect, how to decipher um, what comes past the IP header. Um, and again, main thing we're interested in here is source IP address, destination IP address. And I'll show you how we're going to use those uh, in this class. Let's briefly talk about ICUMP, the Internet Control Message Protocol. Uh, ICUMP is an extension of IP. Uh, this actually is also a network layer protocol. Um, it's encapsulated, although it's at the same level, it is encapsulated by IP, uh, which means it uh, it's an embedded protocol. It doesn't use ports. Instead, it uses types and codes to indicate the contents of the message. Now, um, we're going to uh, use... Um, the types and codes or extension of this concept to filter some of this out. Actually, they're going to filter most of it out. Uh, the the main function for ICUMP is for error control and informational messages. Now, um, if you've ever done a ping, you've used ICUMP. Uh, if you've ever done a traceroute, uh, you know, a Windows box, you've used uh, 
iComp. Actually, on a, uh, a Unix box too, you're you're using iComp. Um, the problem is, uh, anytime you are allowing information out of your network, uh, it's something that a uh, an attacker can use against you. So. We're actually going to filter most, if not all, ICOMP packets from leaving our network. It's uh, it's just a good thing to do because uh, uh, the bad guys will use it against you if you allow these types of packets out. And we'll talk more about this later. Um, these videos are just kind of an overview. Here's a uh, a ping capture. In Ethereal, notice the, the highlighted packet is a ping request. Uh, that's actually a type 8 code 0. Um, you can actually Google up uh, ICOMP types or ICOMP codes or types and codes or whatever you want to put it, and uh, you can find a list of these uh, online, no problem. Um, there are several types. And again, we'll look at these in more detail later. ARP, just briefly, um, ultimately when we're addressing a packet, we've got to have the, the hardware or the MAC address, that stands for Media Access Control, to actually uh, address properly address the frame header. Um, ARP is the mechanism that gives us the MAC address corresponding to a given IP address. Um, it does this by broadcasting. It uh, does not use IP so therefore it's not routable it's only going to uh, occur on the local network um, the way the protocol is set up it'll store these IP number to MAC address mappings in a local cache uh, for a certain length of time I think Microsoft is set up to uh, to keep uh, a mapping for two minutes unless you uh, some application running on your computer reuses uh, the mapping sometime in that two minutes and then if that's true uh, your um, your operating system or like XP for example will keep the mapping in uh, up to 10 minutes before it flushes it out um, Again, I can't recall anything this has any direct implication this has for uh, firewalls, but uh, for the sake of completeness, I'm going to leave it in. Here's a ARP request. Notice there's no IP uh, here. Um, notice also it's a broadcast. Uh, the request is a broadcast. The reply and this packet here is the reply is uh, it's a directed packet um, it's not a broadcast now there are some security implications through the ARP protocol uh, pretty serious uh, security implications I just can't think of any and that's not to say there aren't any um, implications for uh, firewalls and perimeter defense so uh, uh, there are some implications with uh, the R protocol for intrusion detection systems, so maybe um, it is good I let this in, and I'll explain that to you when we uh, a little bit later on. Now, here's what we're going to do with these MAC addresses: we're going to put these in the the source address and destination address of your frame header. These are both MAC addresses. And I don't really need an ES on this. Both of these are MAC address, is a MAC address. Um, the type, again, just like on uh, the IP header, this is. Uh, indicates the embedded protocol and in the case of uh, most of what we're going to see on the internet uh, this is going to indicate it's an IP uh, type packet I don't remember the code for that 
um, here's the data. Typically, what this is going to be uh, would be an IP header, uh, TCP header, and then finally the actual data that you wanted to send. Um, at the end here, we've got four bytes. They, this uh, graphic that I found calls it a CRC. Other places they call it FCS. This is a frame check sequence, and it's a it's a numerical calculation based on all the contents of the frame up to that point. And uh, if the receiving uh, network interface uh, com also computes it, it will. It's not if it, it actually does. Um, the receiving interface computes uh, the frame check sequence. If they don't match, uh, the packet will be discarded because if they don't match, something has happened in transit. Uh, noises uh, on, the, on the network media has uh, changed uh, zero to a one or something along those lines. So the packet's discarded. Um, and in the case of TCP, uh, the the whole uh, uh, sequence number acknowledgement uh, system will cause this packet to be resent. Uh, so there's a there's a check to make sure nothing's happened in transit. So that's your Ethernet frame header. Uh, so we've gone down uh, all the way through. Well. Uh, We've gone through the networking type layers, uh, transport and transport layer, networking layer, data link layer. Uh, this is what we're looking at now. This is the data link layer. And from here, this is turned into uh, ones and I don't know why I have an awful time with my pen and zeros and <clears throat> put on the network media it's sent out 